Hello everybody and welcome back to the Rusty Mats channel. Welcome to my third and final video on bar charts. Now in this one, we are going to talk about stacked bar charts or as the Americans call it, composite bar charts. Let's jump in. Okay, so if you have seen my other two videos, links are in the description on bar charts. I start by telling you that on that first video, we talked about how to draw a bar chart, what sort of things we need to look for. In the second video, we look at comparative bar charts. And so you should probably check those out. Anyway, let's jump into this one. So in order to save time, I've just pre-populated some information. So I am a, a salesman of ice cream. I drive around in a van. I'm not really, I'm just making this up. But I drive around in a van selling ice cream and ice cream to different villages and so on. But I wanted to include two of my villages here and talk a little bit about my sales. And what does that mean in terms of me buying stock and going to those villages to sell my ice cream. So first of all, we're gonna jump into um, what's going on here. Now, because this is a stacked bar chart and I'm using two different colors, I will need to have a key of some sort. So I'm gonna let the green be um, village one and the yellow be village two. This is my key. When you're doing this for exams and things, make sure that you do write down a key for this. Now, how do I know how tall to go up on my, um, on my frequency axis? This is the number of ice creams sold here. All right, so how do I know how tall to go? Well, because one bar stacks on top of each other, that's why it's called a stacked bar chart. Um, before, because one bar stacks on top of each other, I need the sum of what's going on here. So I notice this is 35, that's 35, that's 35. So I know 35 is the height I need to go to. So on the scale, I went up to 35. Now let's deal with village one first and then we go on to village two. So for village one, I need to go all the way over to 25. So I'm going to, and this is for my strawberry ice cream. So 25, so I'm just gonna bring this down just a little bit there to 25. Perfect. Now let's go plot the next one. Next one needs to be 10. Okie dokie. So now I've plotted all of my ice cream sales for village one. And as you can see, 25 for strawberry. Um, your vanilla is 10, five here for the pistachio, 15 for the mint choc chip, and another 10 for other that's across the top there. Now I'm going to plot what happens when I go to village two. Now this says 10. And what I do not do is draw a bar up to 10 and stop there. That is for a comparative bar chart, which I've done in my last lesson. For this one, that extra 10 needs to go on top there. So that means it's gonna bring the total height of this bar to um, 35. So I'm now going to take my bar, I'm gonna make it a little bit shorter, and then I'm gonna stick it on the top here. Make sure that that goes up to 35. Boom, that's it. So now we're going to get the next one. So this one is for village two. It only goes up to five. So when I add five to 10, this should bring me to 15 there. So it's a bit of a short one. Now I'm gonna plot the rest and then we'll come back and have a chat about it. Okay, so let's catch up on what has just happened here. So here is my stacked bar chart, or as the Americans would say, my composite bar chart. And what information have I got here? Well, besides the fact that it looks beautiful, um, and the fact that we obey the rules of bar charts, which is that all the bars are the same, so the same width, sorry, they're not touching, and the widths between them are also the same, the space between them are also the same, and we're doing really well. However, I have got to go sell ice cream today and I'm going to these two villages. What does my stacked bar chart give me that my comparative bar chart did not give me? Well, it tells me how to pack my van because I now need to know, let's say this is what I would normally sell on a Monday. I might have a different graph for a Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and so on for every day. But let's just say this is Monday sale. Every Monday I go, I average about this kind of sales. What does it tell me? Well, it tells me that I need to stack a lot of strawberries, a lot of pistachio, 
and a lot of mint choc chip. So I know I need to stack quite a lot of them because those um, those bars are really, really tall. It also tells me that nah, people are not keen on the vanilla, so don't pack a lot of those. Still bring them, people are gonna buy them, but don't pack a lot of those. And the other flavors I've got as well, just throw a mixed bag in there because at the end, when the person comes to the window, and they ask for, I don't know, rum and raisin. I can say, eh, I don't have any rum and raisin, but I've got these other flavors because I know that those other flavors are selling really, really well. So there you go. That's how you deal with um, stacked bar charts. And also I can do other comparisons, like for example, how many more of pistachio do I sell than vanilla and so on. There's so many other questions that you can answer based on that. But that, guys, brings us to the end of this video. I hope you've learned really well from this th quick three-part series. I hope that you understand how these different types of bar charts work, whether it's a stacked bar chart or a comparative bar chart or just bar charts in general, just looking at information for one variable. If you did, though, please smash that like button. Don't forget to subscribe below and also ring the notification bell so you don't miss another upload. But for now though, until I see you on the next video, peace.